and we're back um before when we left off we were able to save and load the correct objects uh, on the correct position in our game um, as you can see we can move the these things around and we can load it so they they get placed on the correct position all these new objects and we are also deleting the old objects from our game so right now we would like to add some more stuff to our um, save function so that we can save our uh, uh, scale and our rotation to do that we need to go to our save function and inside our save function we will have to add a plus and an underscore and the reason that we use the underscore is of course because that's what we are using to split these and after that we need to say transform dot local scale it's called and then we make the plus and the underscore again and we say transform dot uh, local rotation so now we're saving the rotation and the local scale as well then we have to go to our load function and down here we'll have to say transform dot local scale is equal to save game manager dot instance dot string to vector and in here we just give it values two so we need to make sure that number two thing inside the, the second value in values is uh, the third one actually because it's index zero so the third value is our scale and that's also going to happen because object type is zero position is one and two is local scale okay so we need to be able to say transform that local rotation equals save game manager that instance dot string to quaternion and then give values three with it but right now we haven't added any functionality to this function here so it's not going to return anything so we need to say specific object uh, not specific sorry savable object I'm totally confused apparently it's inside save game manager of course and we need to create our string to quaternion function and the thing is it's going to do the exact same thing as our string to vector but it's just going to return a quaternion instead so you can actually take the functionality inside our string to vector and paste it inside the quaternion string to quaternion function the difference here is that you need to change this into new quaternion and it needs to pass position 0, 1, and there's a third one. There's also a W in, as you can see here, in a quaternion. So, so float.pass position and then 3. So that is basically it. Now we have the um, rotation with it as well. So if we go back to our save objects, yeah, then everything should be set correctly up here so we can actually jump into unity and test this if we open it up and play our game then we can take maybe the mushroom here and rotate it a little like this and scale it up place it up here and we can take the stone move it down here and scale it up as well and then we can take the crate and we can rotate the crate a little maybe um if i could if i could grab one of the corners that is there we go there and then we save this and stop playing the game and then we go in again and load and then everything is scaled and rotated just as we wanted it to be so now we can also save and load our um, correct uh, rotations and scales so to set up the specific object save we will have to open up the specific object script and in here we have a save function and a load function and they both call their base version which means that it just goes up here and calls the um, base of this for example the save function in the specific object calls this save and the load calls this one but we also need to save the specific objects speed and strength and to do that we will have to access the save string up here and add the str save string to this function here or to this call here and to do that we simply make a plus underscore plus save right now save is empty but we will do something about that by going to um, specific object 
and in the save we'll say save equals uh, save um, what's called speed to string plus underscore um, strength to string there we go so now we set the save um, maybe we should maybe rename this um, let's call this save info or something um, or actually just called save stats just to make it more specific save is another thing maybe so in the load function we'll have to make sure that we load the correct fun uh, thing so we have to say speed equals float dot pass values uh, four and we'll have to do the same thing for the strength so strength float dot pass value five so now we load the speed and the strength as well and let's try to save and jump back in here so if we take our crate play our game here oh wait <laughs> we will need to make sure we can see it in the inspector so go to the specific object and put the serialized field tag on our speed and strength so we can see them out there and let's give it a minute there we go so if we play and let's say this crate levels up and he gets five in speed and he has 13 in strength and the stone he also leveled up and he got like 20 speed three strength and then the mushroom he leveled up but he didn't get a lot he just got one speed and one strength okay so now they have some speed and strength and we save this we stop playing the game and we'll play again so their speed and strength are zero and we load and then we try to click on the objects again and you'll see that let's see if we can find them here there we go the cube now the box crate has five speed 13 strength and the stone here has 20 speed three strength and the mushroom has his one speed and one strength so now all of them has loaded their stats as well so that's how you can actually also add more classes to your save game and keep building on uh, up onto this uh, save and load function so you can always save all stats all positions and so on but before we are done there's two things we'll need to switch um, two things we'll need to fix first of all when i play the game and i will for example um, delete the crate and i try to save then i get a null reference exception here because i just destroyed the crate but the crate is still inside my um, savable objects list so it never got removed from there and that's why it's trying to save something that doesn't exist so to fix this we'll have to jump back into our um, savable object script and in the bottom here we have this function called destroy savable and this function is this function that you will need to call every time you destroy a savable object you can never just call the destroy function you always have to make sure you call this destroy savable so what it's going to do is going to say um, uh, game manager save game manager instance dot savable objects dot remove this so this is going to remove the savable objects from the savable objects list so that we don't get that null reference exception when you're done with that you can say destroy game object and this should destroy the game object in the game world after without giving you any reference exception later when you save so we can test this by going to our specific object there is an update function in here and simply we don't need this object function and update function uh, but this is just a test to see how everything works we can say destroy savable so when we update we simply destroy it right away when we play the game and then there shouldn't be any problem in uh, trying to load uh, let's actually make if input dot get key down not key up yeah okay get key down key code dot a for example so if i press the a button now it will destroy all my objects here let's try to save this and if we jump back play the game and i press a destroys the objects and i press the save button then none of the objects are, are giving any reference exceptions which means now i saved the game without any objects on it so if i press load it removes everything but yeah it, it works now so remember 
always use the destroy savable function when you are actually destroying a savable object. We can just delete the update here, we don't need it. And save. But there is actually one more problem we'll need to fix. Um, if we go back in here, and I have a scene here called, let's call it level, level 1. And if I run the game and I save all these objects here, and if I create a new scene, um, let's just say let's say that I delete the crate, the mushroom, and the stone, and I say file, and I say save scene as, and then I call this one level level two, and save it. Then if I run the game in level two now, now I'm in level two and I load, then all my objects from level 1 just got um, loaded in level 2. And the same goes if I go to level 2 and add something. Well, it will also appear in level 1. So that's not very good. We will need to make uh, be able to distinguish between the different levels when we load something. So to do this, go back to the save game manager. And up here where we add the object count, we will actually have to make sure that we also include the level. So basically, instead of calling this one object count, we actually just call it application dot loaded level dot to string. So this will save it under the correct level. Instead of saving it under up uh, object count, we will save it under level one or level two. So when we load it, we just look for the string called level one to find the correct amount of objects. So with that done, we can actually start setting up from our object count down here. We have the object count. We are looking for the object count, but that's not the case. We need to look for application dot loaded level to string so that we get the correct object count that fits the level. So everything still works normally now, according to the amount of objects. Um, but we will also need to make sure we only load this, the correct objects uh, for the level. So if we go to the specific object here, and not specific, sorry, the savable, we will also need to add the object count to the um, to the string uh, when we save something. So not object count, sorry, the level, uh, the loaded level name. So basically, when you set the string, you'll have to write application dot loaded level plus, and then a normal dash plus. So this is going to make a save that looks something like this. If it's level one, then it's index zero, dash 10, for example. So the first value here, the loaded level is the index of the level. And the dash here is uh, the dash we make in between the two of them. And the next one is the amount of objects. And this 10 could be any number. Uh, it could be zero or it could be a hundred or whatever. But this, this is what it's going to look like. Besides that, we'll have to go back to the save game manager and inside the load function in the save game manager, we'll also have to make sure that we use the, the level name when we try to load something. So we have to say application dot uh, loaded level plus i to string plus underscore, not underscore, sorry, a dash. So if we don't do this, uh, with the dash here, well, then it's not going to work. We need to make the normal um, dash, as you can see here, because we just did that inside our savable object. We just told it to have this structure right here. Okay, so the next thing we'll have to do is to save, jump back into the game, and out here we'll have to go to build settings, and we'll have to add level one, and we'll have to add level two, in the correct order, then you'll see that there's a zero and one here, and this is the one that's going to call when we load the level. So in level one, we have some different objects. Let's try to play it and move the crate uh, down or something and take the mushroom and maybe rotate it. And then we save this and then we replay the game and see if we can load it. Yeah, everything works here. We can load level one. Then we go to level two. And in level two, we might have uh, one mushroom that is moved to the top left corner and some stones that are uh, scaled up. And we play this game. 
and we save this and then we try to play it again and we can take the stones move them away move the mushroom and load and they both jump back in place and then we can go back to level one and see if everything still is fine there just save the level play it again and if we load then everything is as it was when we saved before so there you have it that is how you can actually save some functionality uh, some information about objects position rotation some stats um, and make it usable through more levels um, if you have any suggestions for the tutorial some things you would like to have added uh, some things you didn't think was very good maybe you want to change it or have some crit criticism about the tutorial then please don't hesitate to uh, put up a comment and i'll see what i can do to either fix the bug or the issue or uh, to add the functionality that you would want in this tutorial again thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you like the tutorial and uh, like my facebook page and follow me on twitter also, remember that Inscope Studios is a community-founded page, so all your support is very, very important to me. You can support me by sharing the video uh, on social media, or you can support me by going to the Patreon page and support me there. If you support me on Patreon, you'll get some different perks. For example, you can get all my projects that I ever made, and you can also um, get some private tutoring if that's what you want. Um, also, if you don't want to support me that much, you can also just uh, click on the link on the screen um, to download this simple project here. And uh, you can also find all of my other projects on the page you will go to there. Again, thank you very much for watching.